Hello everyone! This time, I would like to show you how to manage Nepenthes in winter. First of all, let me explain about the growing medium. I use only Kanuma soil for my Nepenthes. The reason why I use Kanuma soil is because, unlike sphagnum moss, Kanuma soil is less prone to damage. It is less likely to become wet so I do not have to repot as often. The soil is easy to remove when repotting, so there is less risk of damaging the roots. If you want to grow sphagnum moss, cover only the area around the roots of Nepenthes with sphagnum moss and put conuma soil around the roots. Next, let's talk about watering. Unlike summer, the soil dries out less frequently in winter. Therefore, watering is done while keeping an eye on the condition of the soil. Excessive watering can cause root rot, so be careful. As a rule of thumb, I water conuma soil when it becomes whitish. In the case of sphagnum moss, it also turns whitish when it dries out, which is a sign to water it. Sometimes people ask me if insectivorous plants need fertilizer. Basically, they do not need it. They grow fine without fertilizer. Next, let's talk about humidity. In my growing environment, I keep the humidity at 60 to 70 percent. I think that a minimum of 50 percent humidity is sufficient for growing Nepenthes. If you are worried about the humidity, you can put Nepenthes in an airtight wardrobe. If you are worried about the humidity of your Nepenthes, you can put them in an airtight wardrobe and spray her to keep the humidity under control. You can also spray the Nepenthes and cover the flower pot with a plastic bag to maintain the humidity. Finally, fasten the bag with a rubber band to prevent it from coming off. Next, let's talk about sunlight. In winter, the daylight hours are short, so the plants may not get enough sunlight. So, I recommend the use of LED lights. If you use LED lights, you will not have to worry about lack of sunlight. When choosing LED lights, you need to consider the color temperature of the light. Plants need red and blue light to grow. Some lights are available only in red and blue, but for interior decoration, the room will be reddish purple. If you are concerned about this, use a light that can illuminate all white, red, and blue colors. I use a light that can illuminate all the white, red, and blue colors. Here it is. Let's take a look at what's inside. First, let's look at the LED light. This is the wire to hang the light. Now, let's actually turn on the light. It's very bright. It looks like it is blinking in the video, but it is not blinking. Now let's set up the light. I'm going to install it like this, so I'm not going to use any cables to hang it. When the light is turned on, it looks like this. I'll tell you how much heat the light generates. I turned the light on for about 8 hours. This part of the LED light is a little warmer. No problem if you touch it with your hand. I expose my carnivorous plants to the light for about 8 hours. I use 4000 Kelvin light. The irradiation time is about 8 hours. So far, they are growing well. If you have good soil and humidity control and your plants are not growing well, you may want to review the LED lights you are using. I think it is a good idea to review the LED light you are using. Next, let's talk about aeration. Aeration is important to promote plant growth, lower temperatures, and prevent disease. This is especially necessary when humidity is high. When the sun is strong and there is no wine, the rate of leaf transpiration is reduced. As a result, leaf temperatures will be higher, respiration will be accelerated and more abundant, and the capacity for photosynthesis will be reduced. Wine provides carbon dioxide to plant leaves, changes the rate of transpiration, and reduces the increase in leaf temperature. In addition, the continuous delivery of light breezes not only benefits plant growth, but also prevents the growth of bacteria and disease. Also, it is not good for the Nepenthes to be exposed to direct wind. I start a fan in the greenhouse so that the wind does not directly hit the Nepenthes, sending soft air to circulate. If you are not sure of the movement of the wind, hang an object in an appropriate location that breezes gently so you can see the air in the greenhouse moving. If you are having trouble finding a place to put a fan, I recommend a cooling fan for your PC. This concludes our discussion on winter management of Nepenthes. 
How do you manage your Nepenthes in winter? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and give my a high rating. Thank you for watching.